Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We magnify you because you are Lord. Thank you for your hand upon us. Thank you for who you are and for the grace that has been made available for us in Christ Jesus. Thank you for bringing us into understanding of reality of your name. I pray today that you will open my tongue and anoint my speech that I will be able to articulate your word for divine distribution. Anoint my tongues, open my eyes and let me speak beyond what I know. Let me move into the revelation of your word so that your people can be blessed. Thank you Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right. You are welcome to day 15 of Apostolic Global Teaching. These are 30 days appointed, set apart by the Lord for equipping of the saints and then for the edification of the body of Christ. You are welcome if you uh, are watching me let me know where you are watching from and I also want you to help me share the video the live broadcast on your page uh, so that we can have an extensive coverage of this broadcast to the benefit of people who are, are not part of our friend but since they are part of your friend through the sharing of the link they can also partake of today's blessing amen all right um, one of the things i want to say is all this teaching are also available uh, on my youtube page at reverend paul olani you will find this teaching there and so you can subscribe to my youtube page and then you can also receive notification as time goes on, you can receive notification of the new video teaching and then inspiration. 
We are in the days of the diversity of the Spirit. We are in the days that the Holy Spirit is equipping people for the work of the ministry. And those who are called must get equipped and serious with the call of God upon their life so that they can be fit for master's use. Not just being used by master, you must be fit. And one of the things that keeps you fit is being equipped with sound word, sound knowledge, and sound teaching. God bless you real good. I want one of the people watching today to help me highlight today's teaching. And if you follow me on my Facebook page, uh, this is uh, today's uh, Thursday, and I will be teaching on a subject called Faith in the Finished Work of Christ. Faith in the Finished Work of Christ. Faith in the Finished Work of Christ is our subject for today. Let's look at Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. We're going to read a few scriptures today. If you have a notepad, you can also take notes or write notes. Inspired utterances can also be journal, so that you can go back to those journal and then get blessed. All right. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Jesus was addressing um, people and then showing them the, the core of his mission on the earth. And he began to speak to them by the Spirit and said, Come to me, all ye that labor. The word labor them, it means to work hard. Those who are toiling, those who are weary by the reasons of labor, those who continually to toil without result. He said, Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. So Jesus gave a promise to those who come to him and what Jesus promised them is rest. Jesus promised them rest. Now, to be able to understand what this rest is all about, then we will need to go to Hebrew chapter uh, 4 verse 1. This is the way you learn scripture. This is the way to be built up in God's word. Jesus said to them, Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. So let's look at the rest the Bible is talking about. Hebrew chapter 11, we are going to read verse 4, so that that scripture we just read can give us the understanding of the rest that Jesus is talking about. And uh, we are going to trace this rest back to Exodus 33 again and in Hebrew chapter 4 verse 1 let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering his rest any of you should seem to come short of it so we now understand the rest that Jesus promised them it is not their rest it is his rest the rest that Jesus promised, it is his rest. And that his rest is also important for you to know because those who are labor and are heavy laden needs to come into his rest. So what is his rest? The rest that the Bible is talking about, it is the finished work of Christ. The finished work of Christ is his rest. You are not entering your rest. You are entering into his own rest. What is the rest of Christ? He had ceased from labor. From the day he was hung on the tree and Jesus said it is finished, which means tetelestia in the Greek. 
that simply means on the very day that Jesus was hung on the tree and he said it is finished that what has finished is the redemptive work Jesus was sent by the father to come and die for our sin and when he had fulfilled all the laws and the prophecy he said in a loud voice it is finished that is finished simply means i have accomplished this work of salvation for people therefore as many people that are labor and are heavy laden they shall come into my rest so his rest is the finished work that he has procure for as many people that believe in him now i'm interpreting bible now so Hebrew the writer of Hebrew chapter 4 verse 1 now said we must be very careful lest a promise been left us of entering his rest any of you should seem to come short of it that simply means there is a rest that is not your rest you have been called to enter his rest what is his rest that which he has finished which has been given unto us so anyone that is born again has now entered into that finished work the finished work of jesus is the work of redemption that which he went through to procure salvation for us that is what is said on the cross it is finished and because that work has been finished we are now called to enter into the harvest of what he has already done and what is the harvest of the work it is redemption the provision of god the sum total of provision of god for us can only be found in the finished work of jesus that simply means when a man comes to christ he has come to inherit the rest that Jesus has procured for him for those who believe this is very very important if you for, if you don't forget in exodus chapter 33 when moses said if your presence does not follow us we will go no further god said to moses my presence will go with you and i will give you rest i will give you rest that rest is what we are now interpreting in Matthew 11 verse 28 Jesus promised them rest it was a promise in Matthew 11:28 because he has not died and he has not resurrected to procure that salvation now that Jesus has died and he has resurrected ascended to heaven and is now seated at the right hand of God he has ceased from labor because he has finished the work of salvation anyone that is born again must come into the rest that Jesus has procured i hope you get that let me read further hebrew chapter 4 for the purpose of context verse 2 says for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them but the word preached did not profit them not been mixed with faith in them that had it for we which have believed those of us who have believed do enter into rest as he has said i have sworn in my wrath if they shall enter into my rest although the works were finished from the foundation of the world so now that which he had procured which is his rest those who believe have entered into that rest so if you are born again you have entered into that rest that rest is the redemptive work has been procured so nobody can purchase salvation by his own work we are saved by grace through faith ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 for we are saved by grace through faith it is not any man's work lest any man should boast because that finished work 
of Jesus was carried out by Jesus, nobody can boast of his salvation because it has been accomplished by the redemptive work. So all what the Bible asks you to do is to believe in the finished work of Jesus, then you enter into his rest. Entering his rest, it is by faith, true faith. So Jesus has made grace available. But by faith, we have access into the provisions of grace. The provisions of grace, they are the benefits that the grace of God makes abound in our lives and through faith we come into the experience of that abounding grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you need to understand this uh, very, very important. Now I want us to read further because uh, I want you to have uh, the understanding. Let's look at John chapter 6 verse 29, uh, third scripture, John chapter 6 verse 29. I want to do this expository teaching John 6 29 uh, it's going to be a blessing to you Jesus answered and said unto them this is the work of God that you believe on him whom he had sent the work of God is that you believe on him whom he has sent so when a man believes in Christ he has access to the rest that Christ promised us. That rest is entering into the provision that the death and resurrection of Jesus has made available for us. Don't forget that everything you need, 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3, is divine power has made available unto us everything that pertains to life and godliness so when christ died and he was raised back from the dead the entire provisions of god for humanity has been procured through the death and the resurrection of jesus christ so nobody comes to god and then the father will in no wise cast him away uh, there is no such that the father will cast away because jesus made a provision for our reconciliation, for our redemption, for our regeneration, for our sanctification, for our adoption, for our justification, and for our glorification. So you must understand that the finished work of Jesus, they are the redemptive work that gave us access to everything that God has for us. Jesus is the mediator of the New Testament and by him we have access to God and through him we have access to the provisions of God for us. This is very important. So in verse 29 Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God that you believe on him whom he hath sent. So what is going to be your work? Your work is going to be the work of faith. Because what faith is going to do now is that faith is going to give you access to the provision that has been available through the finished work of Christ. If you understand that, say a louder Amen. So we are going to firstly look at certain subject here because my subject today is faith in the finished work of Christ. So what is the finished work of Christ? For the benefit of those who are writing, the finished work of Christ, it is the redemptive work which gives us access. It is the redemptive work that gives us access to all the provisions of God. It is the redemptive work that gives us access to all the provisions of God. The redemptive work that give us access to all the provisions of God. That is the finished work of Christ. The finished work of Christ. It gives us access to all the provisions of God for us 
in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We need to understand this. Uh, uh, very, very important. It's, it's important we understand this. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, glory, glory, glory be to Jesus. Okay. Let's just one more minute. So the finished work of Jesus is the provisional work that has been made available for us in Christ Jesus. Finished work of Christ. It has been available for us before the foundation of the world. But uh, uh, okay. All right, let's um, let's go back to Hebrew chapter four. Let's go back to Hebrew chapter four. If you are still with me, say a louder amen. Hebrew chapter four. We go back to Hebrew chapter four and read that scripture once again. All right, Hebrew four say something very uh, very powerful Hebrew 4 so um, let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest what is the finished work of Jesus it is the work of redemption that gave us access to the provisions of God for us that work has been finished through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Very important. You need to understand these uh, basic things because it is important we understand them. If we don't understand them, uh, there will be crisis in our faith. Our faith needs solid revelation before we can actually uh, enjoy all that the Father has for us in Christ Jesus, and that that's 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 very important. And then the second important thing you must understand is that our faith, that is our disposition to the finished work of Jesus. Faith is your disposition towards the finished work of Jesus, which gives you a leverage on that work. Faith gives you access to that provision so if you check hebrew chapter 11 uh, the hebrew chapter 11 was uh, something very powerful that i want everyone to really understand when you hear now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen the evidence of things you don't see is faith and what is the evidence of things you don't see? There are things that Jesus has made available that you cannot see them with your natural eyes. For example, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we were healed. You must understand that you may not be able to see the healing, which is the provisions of God from the physical eyes, but the evidence of things you don't see that you have already perceived in your spirit, it is faith. So what that faith does is that the faith gives you access to the abounding grace of God because Jesus' death and resurrection makes the grace of God available. Which grace? Grace that obtains forgiveness. Grace that gives us access grace that gives us boldness grace that gives us confidence grace that positions us with god grace that gives us position before god the grace of god gives you position it gives you access it gives you a seat the bible says we are all seated with him in heavenly places far above principalities and power so the grace of god gives you access to all the provisions of god the grace of God gives you position. The grace of God gives you boldness. Let us come boldly 
to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find help in time of need. So grace gives you boldness, gives you access, gives you position. The grace of God also gives you confidence. That grace gives you leverage. By grace you are saved. The grace of God brings you justification. That grace is available. So when the grace of God abounds, then faith takes advantage and it takes over that which the grace of God has made available for you. So the Bible now says, now faith is the substance of the things hoped for, the evidence of things you don't see. The things you don't see physically, it has evidence. Where is the evidence of the things you don't see? The evidence of the things you are hoping for that you don't see abounds in Christ. The evidence of things you are hoping for that you don't see functions and lives in Christ. Because the Bible makes us to understand His divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. So what the grace of God makes available those are the benefit of the redemptive work. Then our faith becomes the evidence of the things you don't see. I hope you are getting my teaching. Our faith becomes the evidence of things you don't see. You don't see. Your healing has been procured. Your healing has been paid for. The evidence of the healing that you have not seen manifested in your body is the faith. Faith will always produce evidence of things you do not see. The things you do not see are real, but they only abound in the spirit. The things you do not see are substance, but they only abound in the spirit. The things you do not see are real. And the only substance through which you can be you can contact what you do not see is faith. So Bible faith is defined as the evidence of things you don't see. Because those things you do not see, they have evidence. And the evidence of the things you don't see only exists in faith. It is only in faith you can see the evidence of your healing. It is only in faith you can see the evidence of your deliverance. Before you take the physical delivery of those things, the eyes of faith always perceives the provisions of God with spiritual sight. So Paul the Apostle said to the church at Ephesus that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ will grant unto them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Uh, my prayer for you today, in Jesus' name, you will take delivery of the things that you do not physically see. So the position of faith is that faith is the disposition of believers towards the provisions of God. The attitude, the character, the perception, the conviction you have about the provisions of God that you do not, you have not taken the physical delivery, but you believe those things exist and therefore your perception about those things are tangible. The Bible says faith becomes the evidence of things you do not see. If you come to God and you ask God for forgiveness how do you see forgiveness you can't see forgiveness when god forgives you of your sin they don't write forgiveness on your forehead faith becomes the evidence of the things you don't see you don't see forgiveness but faith becomes the evidence of the things you don't see because you will know by faith that god has forgiven you you will know by faith your sins are forgiven. You will know by faith God has answered. You will know by faith God has granted you favor. So it is by faith. Only by faith can you take the delivery 
of that which the Lord has procured for you. Very, very important because people do not understand that there are things that even though the finished work of Jesus has made those things available, but it is impossible for you to come into the realization of those things except uh, you take the delivery of those things by faith. So when you are talking about the Bible faith, it does not begin by claiming cars and houses. That is not where the Bible faith begins. The Bible faith begins by the Bible faith begins by taking the delivery of the provisions of God for you by faith. So Hebrew 11 is firstly addressing something very powerful. The finished work of Christ, it is the redemptive work which gives access to every other provisions of God in Christ Jesus. When a man comes to Christ, you have come into the provisions of God. The totality of God's provision is wrapped in salvation. When you are saved, you have been brought into the fullness of God's provision in Christ Jesus. And the only way through which you can take the delivery of this provision, it is by faith. So when you read Hebrew chapter 11, read it with eyes of understand it. That is why the Bible says we do not seek the things which are seen but the things which are not seen. For the things which are not seen are eternal and the things which are seen are temporal. I do not see righteousness. I do not see justification. I do not see sanctification. I do not see forgiveness. They are of eternal. Therefore, I will have to seek those things which are above, which are eternal. Because the things which I don't see, but which I can only see by faith, are eternal. The things which I see with my natural eyes are temporal. So your faith must reach for the eternal value things. The eternal value, the, the, the value of eternal things. Faith will always seek to access the value of eternal things. So let me bring this scripture. I'm just exposing Hebrew chapter 11 verse 1. Now, faith is the substance. Faith is the substance. Faith is the substance. Now, when you hear the word substance, it's a very powerful statement. Faith is the substance. The word substance means a setting under. And it means a support. The word substance in the Greek, it means hypostasis. The word hypostasis means a support. A support. So if you want to, if you want to define it, now faith is the support for the things you are hoping for. The evidence of things you don't see. Faith is the substance of the. There are many things you are hoping for that you will not have them. But what gives substance to what you are hoping for is faith. So what faith does is that faith will give substance to your hope. Your hope is the picture of God's promises that are written in the Bible. Hope is the picture of God's Hope are the promises of God that are available for you but faith will give substance it will give support to what you are hoping for because without faith your hope lacks support so what gives support to your faith is what we what gives support to your hope is what we call faith that is why the writer of hebrew used the word substance to define faith the Bible, the writer used substance to define faith. Hope is good, but hope is not going to get the job done because you need the support of faith 
to accomplish what you are hoping for. So from this Bible, faith is the support to what you are hoping for. It gives strength to what you are hoping for. Faith gives reality. It bat reality to what you are hoping for. Faith gives expression to what you are hoping for. Faith gives confidence to what you are hoping for. Faith gives conviction to what you are hoping for. Faith perfect what you are hoping for because it is support. So the word substance which is opostasis means a setting under is a support. It's like a podium that you are standing on. So the word sub means to set under. That word sub can be found like submersive, submarine, and then submission. A setting under. It's like a podium or a platform you are standing on. So what are you standing on? You are standing on that which is certain under. That is the description, the biblical description of what the Bible defines faith. Faith is the substance. It will give substance to what you are hoping for. Because what you are hoping for has already been made available. What you are hoping for is already available. You are hoping for healing. You are hoping for deliverance. You are hoping for victory. You are hoping for new job. You are hoping for husband. You are hoping for children. Everything you are hoping for is already available. But what gives substance, what gives expression to that what you hope for is faith. So the finished work of Jesus, it is the redemptive work of salvation which gives us access to all the provisions of God. And because these provisions of God are already available, it is your responsibility to develop your faith to be able to access everything. I hope you get that. If you get that, I, I want you to say, Reverend, I understand that. Now, if you read further this Hebrew 11, and you will find out that uh, the Bible also calls it the evidence of things you don't see. Now, this is where it is very, very important because there are some things that you will not see with your physical eyes. How do you know God has forgiven you when you commit adultery? It will not be written on your forehead that you are forgiven. The evidence of the things you don't see, faith is going to produce the evidence. Faith will produce the evidence that your sin is forgiven. Faith will produce the evidence that your victory has come. Faith will produce the evidence that as regard what you are praying for, it is done. The evidence of the things you don't see can only be guaranteed by faith. Therefore, faith and the grace of God must connect together. The grace of God, it is provisional. Faith is dispositional. Every time you read about grace in the Bible, it is the provisions of God. But your disposition towards the provision is faith. So you may, your disposition towards the provision may be bad. Just like the prodigal son, after he had wasted all his resources, went back to his father and then the father took him back and then the elder brother began to get angry. And he said, I am the only one who has been working. You have not even killed a cow for me. And the father made a statement, why are you worried? Everything I have belongs to you. So most of the time that believers enter into worry and anxiety, it is a lack of the revelation of faith through which they can access the provisions of God. So if you are writing, it is very important. The grace of God is provisional, 
why the faith of believer is dispositional. If you don't believe God has forgiven you, then that is going to be your problem. If you don't believe that the God has answered your prayer, then so shall it be according to your expectation. That is why the Bible says it is impossible to please God without faith. But he that cometh to God must believe that he is and is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So what faith does is that it takes delivery of the provisions of God and your faith is also a sign that you honor God. That you prostrate before God is not the sign of honor. Your faith honors God. And God will always honor your faith. Jesus told the woman, Your faith has made you whole. I just responded to your faith. Everywhere I see faith, I respond accordingly. So you must believe that God has forgiven you. You must believe that God has healed you. You must believe that God has answered. You must believe that your husband is coming. You must believe that your marriage will happen this year. That disposition is important to be able to reach that which the Lord has made available. Have you read Romans chapter 8 verse 1? When the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walks not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and the, the law of sin and death is the law of doubt. The Bible says, He that doubts in his heart must not expect any good thing. The law of sin works with doubt. Doubt works with death. That man said, Even if God opens the windows of heaven, this cannot be. Elisha said, You will see it with your eyes and you will not partake with your hand. So anyone that is doubting the provision of God is bringing death into his consciousness. That is why you have to come to him, believe that the provision that has been made through Jesus Christ, you can take the delivery of that provision by faith. I hope you get that uh, very important. I'm just trying to simplify scripture for you. Now, when we'll talk about the finished work of Jesus, how does the Bible define the finished work of Jesus? It is the redemptive work which gives us access to every other provisions of God in Christ Jesus. This means his work of redemption on the cross has given us access or has given Holy Spirit access to regenerate. What is the difference between redemption and regeneration? Redemption is the accomplishment of salvation for our sin. Regeneration, it is the active work of conversion that is being done in us. Jesus, through his blood, we obtain forgiveness of sin. Redemption is the forgiveness of sin we have received. The forgiveness of sin we have received is redemption. But regeneration, it is the conversion that we experience in Christ Jesus. After our sin has been obliterated and we have received forgiveness of sin, the transformation that begins to take place in us, the salvation, the Holy Spirit is the one that do, that bring us into salvation. We receive salvation by faith, but we come into the experience of that regeneration by the walking of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the one that is working in us both to do, both to will and do of God's pleasure. So when the Holy Spirit came, he came to bring us to the practical side of the redemption. That is exactly what is in John 19 verse 30. So the finished work of Christ gives us access to his rest. In the Old Testament, all the high priests, there, is, there was no seat in the most holy place because a high priest will have to come every year to perform atonement. The word atonement means the sin that God has forgiven at moment because he can change his mind after one day. That is at 
atonement. Atonement means at moment. That is presently I am not angry with you. But it does not guarantee I won't be angry with you tomorrow. So the high priest will have to do the atonement for sin. But there was no seat in the most holy place. But the Bible said when Jesus offered himself, 1 John chapter 1, 1 John chapter 2 from verse 1, when Jesus offered himself as a propitiation for our sin, he became God's eternal sacrifice of acceptance, and therefore he doesn't need to die again, neither to perform that anymore. The Bible now says that Christ is now seated at the right hand of God. The signs that he has finished his work, that is why he is seated at the right hand of God. Jesus is seated because he has fulfilled every condition for salvation. Only what remains now is to believe. And your belief is acknowledgement of good things, confession of your sin, and confession of Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and believe in your heart that you are already saved. Your faith, which is the evidence of things you don't see, is going to produce an activation of the reality of those things that you have trusted God for. So believers need to understand this very important. All right, so the finished work of Christ gives us access to his rest. His rest simply means we are entering into the benefit of what he has accomplished what he has accomplished for us therefore we are seized from our own labor to inherit the kingdom of god and salvation now let's look at ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 very important let's go to ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Verse 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Salvation is the gift of God that we receive through Christ Jesus. So, the finished work of Jesus now means we are now entering into his rest because that provision has been available. So, by grace, we are saved, not of works. And then, we are entering into his rest, which also procure a seat for us in Christ. The Bible says we are seated with him in heavenly places, far above principality, and power and then we must walk in the finished work our work is w a l k we must walk in the finished work of christ what is the meaning of walking in the finished work of christ we must begin to walk in the truth of what christ has made available so that the Holy Spirit can help us to navigate the journey of life to eternity. So my faith is in the finished work. Now let's come back to Hebrew chapter 11 verse 1, which we call faith. Which we call faith. Now, if you check 1 John chapter 5 verse 4, let's read 1 John chapter 5. We read verse 4. First John chapter 5, verse 4. What does the Bible say? For whatsoever is born of God overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. The victory that overcomes the world is believers' faith. What is our faith according to this scripture? Our persuasion, our conviction, our reliance upon the finished work of Jesus is what makes us overcome the world. The word is a complex state. The word is, it means cosmos. 
The complexity of the world is in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Anytime we are talking about we have overcome the world, it's not talking about the infrastructure. It's talking about the expression of the world as the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It takes faith in the finished work of Jesus to walk in victory over sin, sickness, and death. You will need to walk in victory over sin, over sickness, and over death. It takes faith, a complete reliance upon the finished work of Jesus to be able to overcome the complexity of the world. So the Bible says whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And it says this is the victory. This is the substance. The victory. The evidence that give us that that victory. And the Bible says is faith. Now being born of God means being born again. If you don't want to use I'm born again, you can also say I am born of God. If you don't want to use I'm born of God, I am born of incorruptible seed, or I am a regenerated being, or I am saved. I've been delivered from the route of God to come. All right, so being born again is being born of God, being born of incorruptible seed, or being born of the Spirit. Understand it. Very important. Now, On the subject of faith in the finished work of Jesus, you must also know that everything about faith, the Bible faith, will produce evidence. Everything about Bible faith will produce evidence. And that is why the Bible says that faith is the evidence of things you don't see. There are things you don't see, but they have evidence. Somebody say, how do you know you will not die young? And you tell them, I have evidence. And somebody said, what is the evidence? Because it is written in the Bible that I will not die, but I will live. And with long life, will it satisfy me? The evidence will always come. So faith will always produce evidence. The evidence of things you don't see is what faith produces. The evidence of things you don't see is what faith produces. The evidence of things you don't see is what faith produces. Now, if you are checking your Bible, just say faith is the support. The word substance means a setting under. And a setting under means a support. Faith is the support to the things you hoped for. But it also produces evidence of things you don't see. You don't see forgiveness, but faith produces the evidence. You don't see justification, but faith produces the evidence. You don't see sanctification, but faith produces the evidence. Faith will always produce evidence that you do not see with your physical eyes. So the delivery of the abounding grace of God, the delivery of those provisions, is what faith goes after. Don't forget one of the profound statements I made today that grace is provisional. Why faith is dispositional? Your disposition towards the provision of God is what faith is all about. So you must act as it has happened because the Bible says it has happened. That is how to live in God. If you have sinned as a Christian, go back to God, confess to Him, and act as if you've been forgiven. The devil, the torment the devil brings to believers that fall into sin, it is the torment of guilt and condemnation. But what faith does is that faith gives you the evidence of forgiveness that you have obtained because the devil will keep bringing 
the evidence that your sin has not been forgiven. So the evidence that your sin has not been forgiven, the devil brings guilt, shame, and condemnation. But faith gives you the evidence of things you don't see. There are things you will not see, but faith brings the evidence. How do you know you've been justified by faith? How do you know you've been saved by grace? How do you know that your sin has been forgiven? How do you know you are healed? How do you know your child will not die? How do you know the sickness is not unto death? Faith will always give substance. It will give support to what you are hoping for. Your hope is the expressions of God's promises. But your faith is the substance that makes that hope alive. It brings profit, a physical manifestation to what you are hoping for. I hope you get that. And it's the evidence of things you do not see. So when we are talking about the finished work of Jesus, it is not going to be a complete teaching until we'll teach about faith in the finished work of Christ. So I wanted to say after me say my faith is in the finished work of Christ. So the work of Christ is the redemptive work. My faith access all the provision that abounds in salvation because people don't understand the word salvation. And that's why I'm making this teaching both on the theological and revelational background. People don't know what salvation means. All the provisions of God for creation is wrapped in salvation. It is in salvation you are saved, justified, sanctified, glorified, adopted. And it is in this salvation you have access to the throne of God. It is in this salvation. So the totality of the provisions of God for a man is wrapped in salvation. That is why if you are not saved, it is not possible to access the provisions that God has made available through Jesus Christ. So salvation first. That is where and how to come into the fullness of God's provision. So the required meant for you to come into the experience of this provision is faith. Is faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Your faith. What is the world? The word means cosmos. It is the arrangement of the world in such a complex way that makes it difficult for people to be free from its demand. And the word is expressed in three ways. The loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life. Faith gives us victory over this word. Which word? The word of sin. The word of lust. The word of pride. The word of iniquity. It is your faith that overcomes that word. The word word here, it also means eon. And it's talking about a manifestation of a life that is lived without God. It is faith that gives you victory over such life. The life of no involvement of God. The life you've been living before you were saved, it is an independent life. Life without God life without godliness, life without salvation. But when a man, whoever is born of God, overcomes that word. Which word? This word of sin and iniquity, helpless and sorrow addictions, this word, only faith in Christ can make you overcome that particular word. That word is a complex word. It's so complex and difficult. Addiction is one of the things that is very difficult. Some believers are still struggling with addiction. But the Bible says, Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world. This word, which means the word that illustrates sins and iniquity. Only faith in the finished work of Jesus gives you victory over 
that word. Which word? The word of sin. The word of Satan. The word of sickness. Victory is through faith. Victory is through faith. So we have victory over sin by faith. We have victory over Satan by faith. We have victory over sickness by faith. We have victory over issues that are consuming. We have victory over the law of nature as occasion demand. Then we have victory over condemnation and guilt. The world is a system through which Satan imposes his desire upon people. Satan always wants to impose his reality upon people. Your faith will always overcome that opposition. The power that overwhelms creation, that made them subject to the desire of Satan, your faith will always overcome such opposition. That the greatest opposition you will have is to remain in a sinful condition. Your faith will always resist that opposition. It will give you victory over that opposition. And this is very, very important for everyone listening to me it is very important so you must understand now now that i've explained hebrew 11 verse 1 that now faith is the substance of things you hope for if you check the word hope it is in past tense in hebrew chapter 11 things you are hoping for faith gives substance the word substance is the word support a setting under it is like when you put a platform and you are standing on a podium that podium is substance that is the word setting under from the word substance we have the word submarine submersive submission that which is setting under that gives you a stance on it that is why it is substance. That which give you stance on a soap is faith. That simply means you will fall if you are standing on a shakable platform. You will fall if you are standing on a rickety chair. The Bible now says what your hope is standing on. Your hope is built on nothing else. So what your hope is standing on, it is faith. Faith gives support to what you are hoping for. What is your hope? Your hope is the expressions of God's promises that is made available in Christ Jesus. The grace of God is provisional, but your faith is disposition. That means every time you are hoping for something, you are hoping within the context of God's promises available in the scripture. For the Bible says, for all the promises of God in Christ Jesus, they are yea and amen. That is, God has said yes to that promise. Your responsibility by revelation is to say amen to that promise. So one of the ways through which you say amen to the promise is by faith. So faith is the, your response, your disposition towards the abounding grace of God. The grace has been available through the finished work of Jesus. But your faith is dispositional. It is your response to that provision. And your response to that provision will always determine what you are going to get. So the writer of Hebrew now said, Faith is the substance of the things you hope for. It gives support to your hope. It materializes your hope. And that is not the only thing. The evidence of things you don't see. Because the things you don't see have evidence. The evidence of the things you don't see is in the word of God and is in the realm of your spirit. The evidence of things you don't see is in the word of God. The evidence of things you don't see is in the revelation that are bound in your spirit. I know I don't have a car, but that car, I perceive it in my spirit. I know that healing is, is, is in the word of God, but I perceive it in my spirit. So the conviction I have about that which I do not see is faith so you cannot separate faith and grace they are inseparable because the grace of god is provisional in nature why the faith is dispositional now we don't always have problem with the grace of god but believer has problem with their faith 
The grace of God is not controversial. What is controversial is your faith. Because Jesus has come to make grace abound. The Bible says where sin abound, grace, grace did much more. Uh, the word abound is that you could find the evidence of the grace of God in the life of a man. For that by grace you are saved. And it is not through work lest any man should boast. I hope you understand it. So your faith in the promises of God. You must have faith for all the promises of God. If that promise will not be redundant, you must have faith for the promises. You must have faith for the promises of God, which has been spoken to you by His Word and in your spirit. There are only two sources of there are only two sources of our faith. Our faith is in the Word of God, and our faith is in what God deposited in your spirit. The two places where faith can be expressed is faith is expressed through the Word of God. And faith is expressed through your spirit. Your spirit will always express faith when revelation is planted into your spirit. In fact, your, the response of your spirit to revelation knowledge will produce supernatural faith. So it is not possible for faith to be activated until the seed of revelation is planted into your spirit. Faith cometh by hearing, then hearing cometh by the word of God. Hearing is present continuous tense. Faith will always come, but hearing must also come. If hearing doesn't come, faith will not come. Faith will, will come by hearing. Hearing comes first before faith. Hearing what? Hearing the word of God. Hearing what? Hearing the word of God. Paying attention to the word of God. That is the hearing must come. Then when hearing has come, then faith comment by hearing that simply means the hearing will bring faith the hearing of god's word will bring faith hearing of people's testimony will bring faith hearing of the impossible things that god made possible will bring faith hearing of some one testimony that is similar to what you are going through will always bring faith you understand what i'm saying it will bring faith but the the, the activation of faith is primarily in the word of god and in the revelation God made available in your spirit. Because your, your spirit will always respond to revelation knowledge. And the response of your spirit to revelation knowledge is always by faith. You must understand this. Very, very important. There are three levels of works that are made available on the heart. Either you walk by sight, you walk by time, you walk by experience or you walk by faith. The highest work of a believer, it is the work of faith. Because the work of faith is walking by the Spirit. Faith is by the Spirit because it's the evidence of things you don't see. The things you don't see has evidence. So where does the evidence of the things you don't see, where does the evidence live? The evidence of things you don't see, it lives in God's word. And the evidence of things you don't see, it lives in your spirit. The evidence of things you don't see lives in your spirit. It is in your That's why a man of doubt, your faith is foolishness to carnal people. That is why he said that your faith will not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of when you are acting faith. A natural man and a carnal believers are irritated by your act. The act of your faith will irritate a sinner and a carnal believer. Because you are stepping into the dimension where there is evidence of things you don't see. Because you have seen the evidence of things you don't see. The evidence of things you don't see does not live in time. It lives in your spirit. And from your spirit, you mm, transport the evidence into time. The evidence of things you don't see does not live in time. It lives in your spirit. Then you transport the evidence from your spirit into time. And how do you do that? By confession. That is why no confession, no salvation. No confession, no healing. No confession, no deliverance. 
no confession, no restoration, no confession, no joy, no confession, no happiness, no confession, no confidence. Without confession, there won't be a result. The confession is a transportation that convey the evidence of things you don't see which is already available in your spirit and you are transporting them into your time your time is the physical world that people will now see the evidence but you have to say it before it happens that is the realm where god lives god speaks about something before it happens because he wants people to believe God speaks about something before it happens because in speaking it and it's happening it, that is when it's glorified. God is not a man that he should be mindful. God is not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. As he said it, shall he not do it? As he spoken it, shall he not bring it to pass? So the realm where God lives, it is the realm where both past, future and, and present means one to him. His realm doesn't have any future, doesn't have any past. What operates in the realm where God lives, lives is now. That is why the Bible says now faith is the substance. Because faith lives in the now realm. Faith, Abraham called the things that be not as though they were. We call it the things that are already in existence by our word. Because everything you are calling into existence are already available in Christ Jesus. The abounding of the grace of God simply means all provisions. Of God has been made available by grace but you must step into the revelation of faith so that you can have the evidence of things you don't see the only complex aspect of Christianity is that how we like continue to rejoice over things I don't see because you see it in your spirit you see it in your spirit you see it in God's Word whatsoever is in the Word of God will automatically jump into your spirit. The healing is in the word, then it's in your spirit. Prosperity is in the word, then it's in my spirit. Joy is in the word of God, then it's in my spirit. You must see it in the word of God. Then the second place where you see it is in your spirit. When it moves from God's word into your spirit, it becomes a personal revelation of the promise. The word of God is generic. By revelation, it becomes personal. So revelation makes the general word of God personal to you as if that word is written only to you. So the only way through which the Holy Spirit can personalize the word of God is by revelation. And when the revelation personalizes the promises of God, the revelation wants you to take the delivery of that promises. As if you are the only one the promise is addressing. This is very important this is fantastic so you have to choose whether you walk by sight or you walk by time or you walk by experience or you walk by faith and i want to encourage you walk by faith you must understand faith is believers new way of living faith is a revelation and faith is a walk Faith is a life. It's a new life believers are living. Faith is a revelation. And faith is a walk. Now, because faith is a walk, it requires steps. Because faith is a walk, it requires steps. And then the steps that faith requires, they are the revealed steps, the precise steps, scriptural steps bold and courageous steps and it is also a supernatural step and every step of faith will lead to rest the bible faith is not taking risk the bible faith is taking steps that leads to rest remember matthew eleven twenty eight. come to me all you that are labor and are heavy laden I will give you rest. Jesus promised rest because he has not died and he has not resurrected. So it was a promise. By the time he died and resurrected, when he was on the tree, when he was on the cross, he said, it is finished. That is the second level. It, the rest was a promise in Matthew 11. The rest has been accomplished in John chapter 
um, uh, the second step when he says it is finished. Now, after his resurrection, he said, All power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. So what that means is that after Jesus resurrected from the dead, then he makes grace abound. What is the abounding of grace? The provision, the totality of God's provision is now made available in salvation. I hope you get that. This is a good news. And every time I do a study on, uh, you know, the reality of a new creation and then the utterance and the revelation God gave me concerning it, it, you know, my heart bubbles with joy because a lot of believers are walking in bondage they are walking in guilt shame and condemnation because faith will give you that a power to live a life above sin guilt shame and condemnation you need to understand that so you must understand that to so the goodness of god i've told people uh, the expression of god's goodness of god is the good news the good news simply means the outpouring of god's goodness that christ made available if you don't want to call it good news, call it the goodness of God. The goodness of God is the outpouring, uh, the, the abound, the, 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 the provision that, that, that God made available that only in Christ you can take the delivery. Outside of Christ, the grace of God cannot abound. The grace of God abounds in Christ Jesus. And whenever you have faith, faith will always reach for the goodness of God. Understand that very, very important. Praise God. Now, let me close with today's teaching. I hope you are blessed. If you are blessed, say, Doctor, I'm blessed today. This word blesses my spirit. This is an exposition of God's word. And then it's a strength to those who are weary. It is strength to those who are weary. All right. Um... If the Bible says faith is the evidence of things you don't see, that simply means the evidence exists, but you don't see it. The evidence exists, you don't see it. And you can only see the evidence through the eyes of faith. The evidence exists, the evidence is available, but the evidence is accessed by revelation but received by faith. Now, note to what I want to say right now, very important. Faith gives you access to the provisions of God. The grace of God makes those things available. The grace of God makes those things available. Faith gives you access to those provisions, but the end product of faith is not just access it is to receive. So everything that God has made available in Christ Jesus, we must have the revelation to receive them. Because they have been given. The Holy Spirit has been given. Healing has been given. Deliverance has been given. Prosperity has been given. Good health has been given. Good life has been given. Long life has been given. But the revelation is the revelation to receive. So when you are teaching the Bible, you teach people more to receive. We are not laboring to receive. We must, the revelation must be given to receive. The labor now is the labor of grace. The grace of God has, that brings salvation has taught us to deny ungodliness. So the revelation God is giving us now is the revelation to receive you must learn to receive and you cannot receive until you believe and then you make confession to receive you must believe and then to prove that you believe you must act because your action must correspond to your belief there is a difference between faith and belief belief is the conviction you have about something, faith is the action that your conviction produces. So when it comes to faith, it produces action. When it comes to belief, it produces conviction. 
That's why that man came to Jesus and said, I believe, but please help my unbelief. I am convinced you can heal me, but I am not yet convinced. So conviction is by belief, but action is what faith produces. So the woman with the issue of blood went beyond conviction into action. It is in the action you draw power. Conviction puts you in a good position, but action draws power. The power of God is always available 24 hours, but believer's faith is not. So once faith is available, you draw power from the realm of Christ. Because God will not deny you drawing power when you believe. And this is very important. Um, um, for further study, you can check um, some of my Telegram page. I have thousands of teachings in Telegram, audio, and then um, YouTube. You can check some of my new teachings. I have uh, hundreds of video teachings on YouTube. And then you can check my Facebook. I have four accounts on Facebook. Just check any one of them and look out from the teaching that I have done in the past on the subject of faith. It's going to really bless you and it will really strengthen your spirit. It's very important. We are in the we are in the face of uh, we are in a season in the body of Christ that um, noises is going to fade only substance we stay. When the shakeable are gone then the unshakable will remain. We are in the season that the unshakable will remain. And the only thing that can equip you for this moment is the revelation knowledge. Sound teaching will help you, strengthen you to actually uh, properly position yourself for the things that God has spoken to you. All right, if you are blessed, say amen. Are you, are you left to give? Look here, uh, people are fighting spirit of giving and they don't understand that giving is of eternal. Even though the administration of giving has changed, but the spirit of giving is eternal. So if you feel in your spirit that God uh, wants you to bless what I'm doing, to be able to take this gospel around the world. God sent me to four nations this year, Mexico, South Africa, United Kingdom, and America and then I will I presently live in Toronto and I will be going to these four nations this year by God's grace and those uh, your provision your support is going to make it available for me to go to nations and minister the world healing deliverance and then impact them I'm a prophetic teacher by God's grace with apostolic expressions and grace and then I teach the deep things of the Spirit in such a simple way so that we can all abound in the grace of God. We don't need to complicate Scripture. That is why revelation is given to simplify the complexity of Scriptures. I pray the Lord will help you. So if you feel that God has spoken to you to bless me, you can reach me uh, on Facebook and on Messenger and then I will give you further instructions. My book is out. You can check Amazon, uh, uh, the, the assignment, uh, the spirit forces, and uh, the territory. The assignment, the territory, and spirit forces. It's a book that I wrote for people who are missionary apostles sent to nations, how to take the ground and how to activate the law of life to deal with the law of sin and death. What is affecting every territory is the law of sin and death. But when God sent you into any territory, you are sent to activate the law of life. And the only way through which the law of life abounds is by revelations and instructions. So you must understand that if you don't put prayer on that ground, life is not going to produce for you and for the people God has sent you to. That book is available and then you can check it on Amazon. Check my Facebook. The link is there. Secondly, I, I wrote a book on marriage. Christian marriage is going to be a tremendous check Amazon as well. These two books, I recommend them and other books that will be coming in by the grace of God. I call you blessed. Father, thank you for the word we've received. 
beyond the language I have used to communicate your word, drive the conviction deeper into the heart of people, bring them into persuasion, bring them into understanding, help them. Let the word I have preached today uh, be fully driven into their spirit to produce life, and then it comes out of them as a distribution of the goodness of God, to the glory of God the Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, I will encourage you to go over that teaching on the finished work of Jesus Christ. It's an exposition and it will really bless your spirit. I will come your way again tomorrow by the grace of God, 2 p.m. Ontario time, 8 p.m. Nigerian time, and I will be speaking with young, young ministers tomorrow. Every Friday, I minister to young ministers. I've been doing this for over 20 years now. Um, addressing young ministers of the gospel and I want you to join me tomorrow because I will be teaching on what I call the spirit power the, the power ministry of power spirit of power power in the ministry how does the Bible define power and what are the measure and the expressions of power in the ministry is there anything called power ministry is there any ministry without power? <laughs> Somebody say, I have a power ministry. The Bible says, gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Anyone that is preaching the gospel is administering this by the power of God. So don't have the feeling that you are the one who has a power ministry. I'm going to do an exposition on that tomorrow. And then to be able to bring you into enlightenment and then to encourage you to walk deeper in the revelation of the power that God has given to you to administer ministry. I call you blessed. I will leave you with this worship song one minute and then we'll come tomorrow. I get refreshed every time I preach the sound word of God. It gives me joy and courage that the future is bright. God bless you. <laughs>